Hallelujah. If you know that this year will not disappear with any of your testimony, let your hallelujah be loud and clear. Let's close our eyes as we raise our two hands to the Lord and we sing this song loud and clear. Sing from your heart. Everything you are going to do at this prophetic moment, do it from your heart. Jehovah, we Father, we thank you for this garden of your children and we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you because we know that it is written I am the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end who was who is and who is to come the Almighty said the Lord of hosts thank you because you are the beginning and the end And thank you because as far as you are concerned, there is no impossibility. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you because you are the God of the suddenlies. Your word says, the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. In this our first session, minister to us. Lay your hands upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Please, before you sit down, look for somebody you don't know. Introduce yourself to the person and shake the person's hands. Somebody you don't know. Don't go to your friends. Somebody you don't know. Amen. What month of the year are we in now? Good. I'd like you to prophesy into the life of 12 persons. This is prophetic. Make sure there are 12 in number. Say, my friend, any power that is against your marital breakthrough shall die in the name of Jesus. 12 persons. Shout it loud, hallelujah. Let's have a God bless you. Praise the Lord. The Lord has used the Gen 2 wanted program to bless so many people both here and internationally. Amen. During a relay race, the last leg is always the best man. Amen. So, any form of delay you are having is a blessing in disguise.
Before I go further, I bring greetings from my wonderful wife. Amen. <laughs> Who is busy somewhere else now, but she will see her very soon. <laughs> Glory be to the name of Jesus. This is my first session with you here this morning. There is going to be a second session later on. Amen. We want to look at what I call 34, 34 laws of courtship. What did I say? And this teaching is prophetic too. So if, if you are cutting now, take note. If you are yet to cut, take note. If you want to cut later on, take note. Because I know that as far as you come to Gen 218, you will cut somebody. Or somebody will cut you. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So it's good for us to begin to teach this now in advance. We, do, we don't we, a good leader sees a problem before it becomes an emergency. So before it becomes an emergency, we better start teaching and begin to tell you what to do when the breakthrough comes. Don't be like the woman who prayed vigorously, Father, I want to marry. 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 And she cried and cried for seven days nonstop. On the seventh day, there was an answer from heaven. Daughter, we have heard. Begin to praise me. Say, no, praise me. I've not seen anything. Father, <laughs> I want to marry. <laughs> Within one week, 11 men showed up. It was as if they didn't know where she was before. And now, everybody was bombarding her. Another problem started. Father, which one now? <laughs> so we need to teach you these things uh, before, before hand, so you keep it well. In First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. If you are there, say yes. If you are not there, say wait for me. Uh-huh. All the T, 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 T in the New Testament are together. All the T's. Thessalonians, Timothy, Titus, all of them. All the T's are in the same place. Can we go on? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the loss of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles wish know not God. You don't behave as somebody who does not know God. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Let's keep it there for now. Just like fingerprints, all marriages are different. The Bible says, comparing themselves by themselves, they are not wise. Never, never use another person as a yardstick for comparison when it comes to marriage. Marriage is like tea. T-E-A. There are two characteristics of the tea. 
the color and the taste. Marriage, when it happens, is normally very, very colorful. But when you now get inside and begin to taste, it's another thing. I want you to understand this very, very well. The color and the taste. When you have tea in your hand, somebody can say, yes, that's tea you got. That's tea. Whatever is the name of the tea, whether English tea, Lipton tea, whatever it is, that's tea you got. But the person saying that is tea in your hand does not know the taste of what you are carrying in your hand. So this is why uh, everything about marriage has to be prayerfully done and you have to do it with all the spiritual intelligence that the Almighty has given to you. Marriage is the only part of creation that God declared is not good. God has said this is good and the day and the morning and day and the morning and this is good, this is good, everything is good, everything is good. All of a sudden we get to a place it is not good that the man should be alone. So the only part of creation that God declared not good was being alone. Before and I begin to pick these rules, the laws, one by one. Let me tell you some 14 hard facts that you must bear in mind. 14 hard facts you must bear in mind about marriage so that you know why the, why the courtship is important and why you have to do it. Hard facts. One, I used to follow me, I'm too fast for you. One, there is no perfect marriage. What did I say? No. The only place to find a perfect marriage is the cemetery. As far as both of them are still living and breathing, there is no perfect marriage marriage note that one even the best of couples they quarrel and they settle that's why it's good to know each other very well two the family that prays together stays together sisters what did I say Brothers, mean that if you find a guy or a guy finds you and you say, Let us pray, and he says, No, ah. oh, pray, 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 ah. Ah. it's everything prayer, pray, pray. Instead of praying with you or you praying with him, he wants to examine all the local government in your body. I don't know why you're laughing. I said look at government. <laughs> Once you get into that, you better run. Because the family that prays together, they do what? <laughs> Stay together. And a man who does not want to pray before marriage will certainly not pray when the marriage comes. Are you following me? Three. Disagreements can be solved without argument. Disagreements can be solved without argument. This is part of why you have to know the person you are marrying very well. What did I say just now? <laughs> yes. You can, you can, you can discuss and, and then you get results instead of arguing and arguing and arguing. Somebody has said, argument 
is a sign of ignorance. Discussion is a sign of knowledge. Four. To apologize is a sign of maturity and strength. To apologize is a sign of maturity and what? Strength. Once you see somebody who finds it so difficult to say, I am sorry, you better take your Bible, your shoes, and run. Or somebody who is always right. Always right. Always try. Say, look here. I'm older than you. Look here. I went to University of Wisconsin and University of Toronto. Therefore, when people like us with Toronto and Cambridge degree talk, people like you who went to a regular high school should not be talking. Say, so, do you understand? Does that enter into your thick skull? Say, so, yes, my lord. You better run. Five. Be aware that you are marrying into a family. Be aware that you are marrying into a family. Even if you did secret wedding, you did quiet wedding, you did silent wedding, you are still marrying into where? A family. Six. Intelligent, intelligent partners have a solid financial plan. Solid financial plan. You may not have all the money to start with, but you have a plan. Seven. Too fast. Seven. There is a strong relationship between collective captivity and marriage. There is a strong relationship between collective captivity and marriage. By collective captivity, I mean generational problem, inherited problem. Don't deceive yourself. There is something known as like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. Don't deceive yourself. There is something known like that. I prophesy upon the life of anyone here today whose mother had marital trouble and the trouble wants to spread to you. Whose father has marital problem and the problem wants to spread to you. I prophesy upon your life that your case shall be different. 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 In the name of Jesus, let your woman be protected now. As choir boys in those days, I see feel sorry for myself when I remember. As choir boys in those days, whenever they were burying people, were the first people they put on the front row were the ones who carry pamphlet. For all the sins who from their labors rest. They are just at the front. The pastor stay at the back. Sometimes you enter to the cemetery, your head, your leg enters into a grave that is broken. You say, yeah, 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 my leg. You took your leg out. Well, it was one of those marriages who went. 
and they were burying the woman. And they said, we thank God for the life of this woman who died in the Lord. During a lifetime, she married seven husbands. One, Ajale Koko, two children. Two, Henry, three children. And they counted it until it was seven. And the pastor said, don't you think she has lived a good life and she has gone to heaven? We say, yes. Yes. She has gone. She has gone. That was many, many years ago. I was a small boy. That time, Mountain of Fire, Miracles, Mystery had not started. Then one day, in my counseling room, a woman came to see me. I was complaining about marital problems. The first husband is gone. Second husband is gone. Third husband is gone. She was talking, talking, talking. But I was looking at her. I said, please, what's your name? She mentioned the name. Is, is your mother so, so, and so? Say, yes, do you know my mommy? I kept quiet. Her mother was that person who went to bury. And they counted seven husbands. She's already on number three. I'm praying for somebody here. Like, like mother, like daughter problem. Like father, like some problem. Shall be melted away by fire. In the name of Jesus. There is a strong relationship between collective captivity and marriage. This is part of why courtship is necessary. So you'll be able to ask questions. How many wives does your father have? Say, 27. Okay. How many children <laughs> and your family? 92. Okay. Why is your mother? She's with the third husband. What happened? Did they pay the diary of your mother? So nobody paid diary. She just moved in. Ah. Then you know you have prayers to pray. If you are following me, shout hallelujah. I handled a strange case many years back. This woman said the husband just sits at home and watches CNN. He will not go to work, will not do anything. And one, it's only madam who goes to work. The man does not want to work. And anytime the, the man was, uh, anytime the woman was getting ready to go to work, she, she will hear, dear, say yes, uh, make sure that my breakfast, my dinner is already in the fridge. I will warm it myself. God bless you. Greet your managing director for me. Bye. Does not do anything. Then when it's getting to Christmas, say, dear, will it be nice if your husband follows you to church, to church in short nicker and singlet? The man said, no. Say, well, so clothes for your husband. So clothes for your husband. She was so close for him. That's when the man will follow him, will follow her, appeal to church. This woman was worried. She now came for counseling. I started praying. I started praying. The Lord said, Son, collective captivity. Ask her how many people are married in their family. And I said, Sister, how many children do you have in your family? He said, We're six girls. How many of you are married? Say, I'm the only one. We thought the man was a problem. We didn't know that there was a collective captivity in place. I pray once again. Every collective captivity assigned against your marital life shall scatter. In the name of Jesus. A servant for the
Eight. Eight. Ensure that you establish your own private home. Ensure that you establish your own private home. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore shall the man, a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. If you are following me, shout hallelujah. It is a spiritual abnormal thing and scripturally incongruous to permit my English for you to remain in your father's house in your mother's house and that's why you brought your wife in it's unscriptural you must leave the place even if it's only one room you can afford and your father has a mansion go take your wife to that one room and leave that mansion are you following what I'm saying? So make up. So once you find somebody who does not want to leave his father's house, say, say my man got married there. My sister got married there. All of them are in the backyard. All of them are in the boys' quarters. All of them are here. So you have to be. Uh, all of you. This is where you have to be. You, you can't leave. Say ah. The Bible says leave and cleave to your wife. Nine. Marriages do not just happen. They must be developed. These are hard facts. They have to be developed. And development must start from the foundation, which is a courtship. Ten. Never go to bed while being angry with each other. Don't go to bed with anger. Never. It's a rule. If married people go to bed angry with each other. The devil will be their bedfellow that night. Eleven. Criticisms and nagging. Criticism and nagging destroys love. So if you are the Always critical type. Always nagging. Trouble. Twelve. Never try to force personality changes. Never try to force personality changes. Only God can change a person. Only God can change a person. Don't come force anybody to change. Even our our traditional Yoruba fathers who never read the Bible, they say it is hard. It is hard to fold dry fish. Only God can make dry fish to fold. (laughs) If not, it will break. Thirteen. The right thing at the wrong time is still wrong. The right thing at the wrong time is still wrong. You are doing the right thing at the what? At the wrong time. It's still wrong. So you must 
It's the only courtship you decide what is the right time. Point number 14, which is the last thing I want to say about that. A healthy and pure courtship. A healthy and pure courtship is the foundation for a marriage that is heaven on earth. A healthy and pure courtship is the foundation for a marriage that is heaven on on earth. Fair follow me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What is courtship? Courtship is a period between agreement to marry and the wedding. The period between you agreeing to marry a person and the wedding. That is courtship. That is, courtship is the gap between yes I will do and then the yes I do that you come to say in church yes I will do you say to the man and yes I do that you come to say in church if you follow me shout hallelujah Hallelujah. Isaac found Rebecca when the servant brought Rebecca home. One trouble with that relationship was that there was no courtship. Because there was no courtship, this couple really did not understand each other very well. And they divided the family into two. Mother took Jacob. Father took Esau. Trouble. Somebody in the Bible that sometimes when I read about him is strange to me. I, I sometimes it's even hard to understand what is wrong with the man was Samson. Samson. It's hard to understand what really what really went wrong with Samson. Delilah was not the first woman that Samson had. It was number three. He took the first one, went to a prostitute. The man was just playing around and doing all kinds of things which eventually destroyed him. Solomon did not do any courtship with anybody. He will have spent the rest of his days doing the courtship. Because there were 1,000 courtship to do. But the first wife of Solomon was an Egyptian. If the foundation of his marriage was in Egypt, then don't be surprised that he went from 1 to 1,000 later. Look at Moses in the Bible. You never see anywhere in the Bible where you find a discussion between Moses and his wife. The first time we read about Moses and his wife, they were fighting. That man would have been greater and perhaps would not have gone the way he went if that wife was okay. His ministry would have been a lot, lot greater. This is why courtship... (laughs) It's not negotiable. I'm not talking about dating. You can date housefly. You can date cockroach. You can date lizard. You can date anything. You can take somebody to an eatery and waste your money. And you can buy soft drinks until the soft drinks softens your face. But <laughs> I'm not talking about that one now. You're talking about. You've, you've prayed, you know where you are going, and you follow it. And men and women 
who have made impact were those who knew where they were going and they just followed it. Not those who do trial and error or the random sample they do in the campus. You sample somebody for one hall, sample another person from another hall, sample another person from another department. You keep sampling and sampling and sampling. And by the time you finish sampling, you won't know that you are the one being sampled. Shout hallelujah. When I was a, a visiting lecturer, a, a, an external examiner in the university, I went to the University of Benin as an external examiner. And when I got there, a professor came to welcome me. Professor looked after me very well, very friendly. Now took me to the university guest house. After, as he was checking me into my room, he looked back and said, Dr. Lukoya. I said, yes. Um... Do you need spare tire? So, I do understand. Spare tire. I said, Prof, my, my vehicle has spare tire. <laughs> but I noticed that my driver was laughing. <laughs> my driver was so was laughing so much. I said, Prof, I don't I, I have spare tire. And I said, no, 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 no. I mean, do you, do you need a woman to stay here for the night? Oh, I see. I said, is that what you call spare tire? <laughs> he said, yes. Or do I bring you some samples so you can pick? And I said, prof. Uh, okay, he said, you don't understand. Okay, he said, okay, do you need bush meat? I said, which one, which one is bush meat again? Said, Woman too, sir. I said, prof, if what you don't understand is that you are the bush meat. <laughs> A brother and sister wanted to marry. They started praying. Now listen to me carefully. They started praying. Started praying. This happened many, many years ago. Started praying. As they were praying together one day, God just opened the eyes of the sister. He saw the brother went deep, 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 deep into the bottom of the sea and brought out a chain and sat back where they were praying. The sister said, In Jesus' name, Amen. Say, Bro, where did you go? Where did you go? You could not talk. Say, because I saw you, you went into the bottom of the river and you brought out a chain. The brother could not talk. If not for the prayer meeting, she would not have found out. She would not have found out. There was also another case. Many, many years ago. Immediately they finished from the reception. The woman kept telling the brother, are you the husband or am I the husband? Are you the husband or am I the husband? I said, I'm your husband. Uh-uh. What do you mean? I'm the head of the home. Didn't you hear what they said in church? Say, <laughs> are you the husband or am I the husband? They got home. I know. First day of wedding. Blah, blah, blah. They sent all the visitors away. They undressed. The woman was still asking, are you the husband or am I the husband? The man was saying, what kind of question is this? Then she gave the man a dirty slap on his bum bum. Bah! This is not story. Oh. Immediately, the male organ of the man went to the woman. The woman's female organ came to the man. She just pushed the man on the floor like that. The man became the woman. And the woman slept with the man all night. Then in the morning, slapped the bomb again. Bwah! Then his male organ was returned. I said, hey, What do you want for breakfast? The man said, Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
We have to stop here. We, we continue in January. Is that right? We have other things to do today. <laughs> right. Well, before I go, finally. So, we're talking about courtship now. The time of courtship is, number one, a time for laying solid foundation for your marriage. That's what it's meant for. To lay solid foundation for your marriage. Two, it's a time of getting to know each other very well. Three, it's a time for spiritual fine-tuning. Whatever is absence in both of your spiritual lives, it's time to pursue it and get it. Glory be to the name of Jesus. We shall continue next time. Amen. Just close your eyes where you are. And with a loud voice, a voice louder than anyone around you, say, Open my eye, O Lord. Hallelujah.